Auto Shop Safety. When in an auto shop, it is very important that you learn to think safety. This video will summarize the types of accidents that can occur in an auto shop and explain how to prevent them. An auto shop can be a very safe and enjoyable place to earn a living. However, if basic safety rules are not followed, an auto shop can be very dangerous. Every year, thousands of technicians are killed or injured on the job. Unfortunately, most of these injuries or deaths were caused by someone breaking a safety rule. When working in a shop, you must constantly remember you are surrounded by others. This makes it very important that you concentrate on safety to prevent injury to yourself and to your co-workers. Remember, safety is your responsibility. Only you can use correct methods to prevent injuries. The auto shop can be divided into several work areas. You must know the rules that apply to each. Typically, these areas include the shop area, the work stall, grease rack, front end rack, tool room, and classroom. The shop repair area is any location where repairs are made. Learn your shop's layout and organization for improved work productivity and safety. A stall is an area where a car can be pulled into the shop for repairs. To avoid accidents, always center the car in the stall. The grease rack contains a lift for raising a car into the air and special equipment for injecting lubricants into the vehicle. When using the lift, remember these safety rules. Obtain a demonstration and get permission before using the lift. Position the car on the lift using service manual instructions. The manual will give lift points and center of gravity information. For example, this diagram shows the lift points for one make and model car. If needed, unscrew the rubber pads on the lift so that they can contact lift points under the car chassis. Adjust the arm lengths as needed, then swing the four lift arms under the car and position them precisely. To avoid damage, double check that the lift pads will not strike and damage fuel lines, floor pans, and other weak components. Raise the car slowly while watching for problems. Make sure the safety catch is engaged. Also, Check ceiling clearance before raising trucks or campers. Make sure the vehicle's roof does not hit overhead pipes, lights, or the ceiling. Do not walk under the lift without double checking that the catch has locked into position so that it is safe to work under the car. The front end rack, also called the alignment rack, is another specialized stall used to work on the car's steering and suspension systems. When using an alignment rack, the car should be pulled onto the rack slowly and carefully. Another mechanic should guide you and help keep the tires centered on the rack. As with other complicated and potentially dangerous equipment, obtain a full instructor demonstration before working. The tool room is a shop area normally adjacent to the main shop or classroom. It is used to store tools, small equipment and supplies. Always return all tools and equipment to their original storage locations and wipe them clean if needed. The classroom, where you are probably watching this video, is for building your brain power. It is a relatively safe place to work if you're smart enough to follow the rules laid down by your instructor. Basically, 
you should try to prevent six kinds of accidents. Fires, explosions, asphyxiation, chemical burns, electrical shock, and other physical injuries. Remember, if an accident occurs in the shop or lab, notify your instructor. Use common sense on deciding to get a fire extinguisher or take other action. Fire can cause horrible accidents that can result in disfiguring scar tissue or death. There are numerous combustible substances, gasoline, oily rags, paint thinner, starting fluids. Any of these flammables is capable of producing a fire. Gasoline is, by far, the most dangerous and often underestimated flammable in an auto shop. Gasoline has astonishing potential for causing a tremendous fire. Just a cup full of gasoline can instantly engulf a car in flames. Store gasoline and other flammables in an approved seal container. When disconnecting a car's fuel line or hose, wrap a shop rag around the fitting to keep fuel from squirting or leaking on the hot engine. Do not place quick dry on gasoline because the absorbent particles will become flammable. Never use gasoline as a cleaning solvent. Oily rags can also start fires. To avoid combustion, they should never be stored in a pile anywhere in the shop except in an approved storage can. The can must have a metal lid that will smother a fire if the rags ignite and start burning. Paint thinner and other combustible materials should be stored in a fire cabinet. This will keep these materials away from sources of sparks, flames, and heat often found in the shop. It will also help keep the shop organized and in a safer condition for working. Note the location of all fire extinguishers in your shop. A few seconds time can be a lifetime during a fire. To use a fire extinguisher, remove it from the wall. Pull out the safety pin, aim the extinguisher at the flames, then pull its handle. Use a long burst of agent to smother the fire quickly. Report the fire and set the fire extinguisher aside so it can be recharged. To help prevent fires, never allow anyone to smoke when in the auto shop. Electrical fires result when a hot wire or a wire carrying current to a component touches ground. The wire will heat up, melt its insulation and burn. Then other wires could do the same. Dozens of wires can burn up in seconds. To prevent electrical fires, Always disconnect the battery when there is any chance of shorting connections or wires together when working. You should also know the exit routes recommended in case of a fire. Several types of explosions are possible in an auto shop. Car batteries can explode violently. Hydrogen gas inside and around the top of the car batteries is the same fuel powering the sun. Hydrogen gas is produced when the battery is being charged or discharged. The slightest spark or flame can ignite this gas and cause the battery to explode suddenly. Chunks of battery case and acid can blow out into your eyes and face. Fuel tanks can explode, even seemingly empty ones. A drained fuel tank can still contain fuel gum and varnish. When this gum is heated and melts, it can emit vapors which can ignite and cause the tank to explode like a bomb. Various other sources can cause shop explosions. Special sodium-filled high-performance engine valves, welding tanks, propane-filled bottles can all explode if mishandled. Make sure you shut off the main valve on welding tanks after they are used. If overheated, cans of refrigerant, paint cans, and other pressurized cans can also explode. Asphyxiation is caused by breathing toxic, poisonous substances in the air. Engine exhaust is the most common source for asphyxiation. An engine's exhaust fumes are very toxic, yet they are difficult to smell and detect. Always connect a shop vent hose to the tailpipe of any car running in the shop. This will pull the hazardous fumes out of the work area. Respirators 
should be worn around other kinds of airborne impurities like brake dust, clutch dust, and body shop paint spray. One serious example, asbestos dust from brakes and clutches can cause lung cancer. Always use a vacuum system like this one to contain asbestos. And also wear a filter mask as a backup safety measure. The brake vacuum system will draw the asbestos dust safely down into a storage compartment and keep it out of the shop area. Various solvents, battery acid, and other shop substances can cause chemical burns. Always read directions on chemicals. One example, carburetor cleaner, is so powerful it can burn your hands, face, and eyes severely. Wear rubber gloves and eye protection when using carburetor cleaner. If a skin burn occurs, follow label directions. Hot tanks, often used to clean major engine assemblies, can also cause severe burns to your skin. Never open a hot tank unless you are sure it has been shut off, or else hot steam will blow out onto your body. Electric shock can occur when using improperly grounded electric power tools. Never use an electric tool unless it has a functional ground plug. The third prong prevents current from accidentally passing through your body if a short circuit develops in the tool. Never use an electric tool on a wet shop floor. Electric current will try to pass down through your body into the water and then into the earth ground. Physical injuries can result from hundreds of different causes. As a technician, you must constantly evaluate every repair technique decide whether a particular operation is safe or dangerous, and then take action to improve the technique. For example, if you're pulling on a hand wrench and the bolt will not turn, stop. Find another tool that is larger, has more leverage, or will work better. This mental attitude will help prevent injuries and will improve your mechanical abilities as well. When lifting, make sure you always lift with your legs not with your back. Just mentioned, use the right tool for the job. Always think and ask yourself whether a different tool will function more effectively than another, especially when you run into difficulties. Never carry sharp tools or parts in your pockets. They can puncture the skin. Keep guards or shields in place. If a power tool has a safety guard, use it. Keep tools clean. Wipe your tools clean and dry after each use. A greasy or oily tool is not only unprofessional, but is dangerous. It is very easy for your hand to slip and be injured. Never open several toolbox drawers at a time, because a heavy toolbox could flip over. Serious injury could result because a tool chest can weigh well over a ton. Close each drawer before opening the next. Keep both ends of chisels and punches properly ground and shaped. A chisel cutting edge should be sharp and square. After long hammering, the top of the chisel or punch becomes mushroomed. This is dangerous. Grind off the rough metal to avoid injury to your hand and eye from flying bits of metal. Never use a file without a handle securely attached. The pointed tang, if not covered by a handle, can jab into your hand or wrist. Shop air pressure is usually around 100 to 150 pounds per square inch. This is enough pressure to injure or kill. When using a blowgun, wear eye protection. Direct the blast of air away from yourself and others. Air entering the bloodstream can kill. Until you become familiar with an air wrench, be careful. Do not grab onto the socket, especially a swivel socket, or painful hand injuries can occur. Never turn an air hammer on unless a tool is pressed tight against the workpiece. If not, the tool head can fly out of the hammer with great force. Only use a high-speed type rotary brush in an air drill. A brush designed for an electric drill may fly apart. To be safe, Always adjust an air drill to the slowest acceptable speed and check RPM specs for the tool. 
When using a grinder or wire wheel, keep the tool rest adjusted close to the stone and brush. If not up close, a part can catch and be pulled into the wheel. Make sure the grinder shields are in place. When using a drill press, secure the part to be drilled properly. Use C-clamps or another form of holding device to secure the part onto the table. Use a center punch to indent the part and start the hole. Make sure you remove the key before turning the drill on. To prevent possible injury, release drilling pressure right before the bit breaks through the bottom of the part. A drill bit tends to catch when breaking through. A hydraulic press can exert tons of force. Wear face protection and use recommended procedures when pressing off bearings and other parts. When arc welding, wear the recommended protective gear. Use a helmet with the approved lens. Never look at a welding arc. The arc is so bright it can cause permanent eye injury. If at all possible, take a welding course in school. Wear eye protection during any task that can endanger eyes. This would include using power tools, acetylene cutting or brazing, working around a running car engine, removing snap rings, using pullers, and doing similar tasks. Keep organized. Return all tools and equipment to their proper storage areas. Never lay tools, creepers, or parts on the floor. A creeper on the floor can become a surprise skateboard to someone walking by. Remove all jewelry that can get caught in engine fans, belts, drive shafts. Tearing off flesh, fingers, chunks of hair and ears. Also, roll up long sleeves and secure long hair under a hat. They too can get caught in spinning parts. Work like a professional. When learning mechanics, it's easy to get excited by your work. Avoid working too fast. You could overlook a repair procedure or a safety rule. Know the location of all kill switches that shut off power to equipment. Use adequate lighting. A portable shop light not only increases working safety, it increases working speed and precision. Jack up a car slowly and safely. A car can weigh somewhere between one and two tons, so never work under a car unless it is supported by jack stands. It is not safe to work under a car held only by a floor jack. Once raised, block the wheels that are on the ground to keep the car from rolling off the stand. Drive slowly when in the shop. With all the other people in cars, it is very easy to have an accident. Stay away from engine fans. The fan of a car engine is like a spinning knife. It can inflict serious cuts. Also, if a part or tool is dropped into the fan, it can fly out and hit someone. Remember, electric fans can turn on even when the ignition key is off. When a car engine is running, make sure that the transmission is in park and the emergency brake is set. If the car jumps or is knocked into gear, it could run over someone. Engine oil can be very hot. Make sure you don't get burned during oil changes. Never open a radiator cap until the engine is cooled. If not, boiling coolant could shoot out of the radiator, causing severe burns. To prevent a coworker from falling, always wipe up oil and coolant spills as soon as they occur. If needed, apply quick dry, then sweep it up. Obtain instructor permission before using any new or unfamiliar equipment or power tool. Your instructor will need to give a demonstration. Remember to always think safety. It is up to you to make the shop a safe and enjoyable place to work. <laughs>